All right, guys, welcome back to another one of our vlogs. Today is Saturday, and I am coming to you from the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. Uh, I am currently the chief resident of the neurosurgery service on call this weekend, and I want to welcome you back to another one of our videos. Today's video, I'm actually going to talk to you guys about physician burnout and something that's especially true and especially important to me is resident physician wellness and resident physician burnout. First, before we dive in, I want to share with you guys a little bit of personal stuff. Uh, Mo and I have just celebrated our five-year wedding anniversary, and I would love to share with you guys some of those footage from our, from our celebration weekend. In addition to going out to dinner, we have a vacation coming up uh, to Punta Cana, Dominican Republic, and we're actually celebrating one of Mo's friends from medical school, their wedding. But we've also had an additional few days stay in the DR to continue our five-year anniversary celebration. We actually went there to the DR for our honeymoon, and so it's gonna be very special for us to go back to celebrate our five-year anniversary, and we are both very much looking forward to it. We have both been incredibly busy, I as the chief resident of the neurosurgery service and Mo as a fellow in consultation liaison psychiatry. We've both been here at OSU and so it has been nice though that we've been able to sometimes see each other throughout the day. We've even had some mutual patients in which we uh, discuss patient care over and so that's always fun. Uh, but definitely looking forward to some time off and a nice needed beach vacation. So, without further ado, let's jump into resident physician wellness, physician burnout, and most importantly, ways in which you can combat physician burnout. This topic is so important to me personally because I myself have suffered from burnout during the first and second year as when I was a resident. Um, I remember my interim year and my second year of residency were a tremendously stressful time for me. Um, I was feeling very burnt out. And these are actually habits that I have learned and that I had implemented during that time to get me out of that state to help fight burnout and to really give me a sense of purpose and joy in the work that I do. So first and foremost, it's very important that we identify and we discuss what is burnout. So burnout has three pillars associated with it. The first one is emotional exhaustion. The second one is depersonalization. And the third one is a sense of low personal achievement. So what does that mean? So for me personally, as an intern, I'll speak from personal example. One of our duties as an intern is to go and consent patients for surgery, explain the procedure to them, explain the risks and benefits of the procedure, talk with the families, counsel them appropriately. During this time, I was under an extreme amount of stress. I was very burnt out, as I had mentioned. And this was a time in which I was noticing where my interactions with patients were very terse and concise. Um, I wasn't feeling very empathetic towards them or their families. I was getting frustrated when I had to talk to the families and I didn't feel a good sense of pride in my work. When I reflected on my actions and my feelings, I thought to myself, this is not right. This is not why I went into medicine and so I was able to identify that I was burnt out and I was able to then enact changes and find ways, discover new habits that enabled me to combat this feeling 
and I'm looking forward to sharing those with you here. This type of emotional exhaustion can present itself in many ways. Some people may feel frustrated and lash out at other people in the workplace. Some people may be angry or upset towards their family members, be in a bitter mood towards relatives. As an intern, there was a time in which I was not having a lot of pride in my work. I was viewing each patient as a word on a list, as a name on a list, and I would write check boxes next to each patient with different tasks to accomplish. And so in my head, instead of viewing patients as people, I was really you know, coming away from that and just viewing them as names and uh, tasks in which, for which each person I had to accomplish. And so that was uh, a very depersonalized way of interacting with these patients. And the last pillar is low personal achievement. So for those of you who are interns or residents, I want you to think back to the time that you matched into your specialty of choice. You probably were very excited, you probably were very proud of your accomplishments, and you probably felt a good sense of joy towards your residency and what your future has in store for you. Now, I want you to think about yourself now and how you have felt throughout your residency. Does that feeling match your feelings that you experience every day? If not, that's a problem. As residents, we are physicians, we are doctors, we are surgeons. Yes, we still have a lot to learn in our specialties, and yes, we have a long way to go, but that does not mean that you should respect yourself any less for it. It's been cited that about 50% of physicians nationwide have experienced burnout, and I guarantee you it's even more amongst the trainees. There are a few reasons why physician burnout and resident burnout is so important. Number one, and in healthcare, our number one thing, and which is why we all went into healthcare, is for the well-being and, and to take good care of patients. And so if physicians are burnt out, frankly, patient care suffers. The physicians are not as likely to spend the extra minutes answering questions, they're not as likely to go above and beyond for their patients, and they're more likely to make mistakes which can have negative impact for patients' health. The second reason is for the wellness and well-being of residents themselves. Nobody goes into medicine thinking that becoming a healthcare worker is going to have a negative impact on themselves and, them, and their family. And so it's important that we as physicians make sure that we take care of ourselves during this time period. So one of the things that I'm very passionate about is finding ways and implementing positive habits to help physicians and resident physicians combat the effects of burnout and to overcome burnout. The first way in which we can enable ourselves to fight burnout is by taking care of our physical health. One component of physical health is exercise. I make it a priority to try to get some sort of physical activity at least four to five times every week. On busier days, this may be just a 20 to 30 minute uh, brisk walk and on days when which I have more time I like to do more intense exercise including weightlifting including cardiovascular exercise anything to get my heart rate up to really um, help me de-stress the second way in which I'm able to maintain physical health and I think this is so crucial is proper nutrition so many healthcare workers I see have some of the worst diets you could imagine I'm talking fast food, Wendy's, McDonald's, everything that is unhealthy. Very few vegetables, very few healthy things that our body needs, very few things that are nutrient dense and have a lot of vitamins and minerals. For me, I try to fight the battle of fast food and unhealthy food by packing my meals to work. And Every night I make overnight oats and I've shared my overnight oats recipe with you guys in a different video. That's one of the ways in which I'm able to stay sustained and stay full and feed my body nutritious meals uh, so I don't feel hungry and I'm not tempted to snack or to eat unhealthy throughout the day. In addition to packing breakfast, I also pack a healthy salad and a protein for lunch. That keeps me very full throughout the day and if I do crave something, 
I never resist my cravings, but when I have those two things, I know that you know overall my diet is automatically gonna be much more healthy and I feel good about what I'm putting into my body. The second component to address to fight and combat burnout is mental health. As we all know, physical health and mental health go hand in hand. If you're able to exercise, um, you're able to decrease your cortisol levels, you're able to decrease your stress, you're able to decrease your anxiety, that helps with your mental health. In addition, I like to have friends and I like to maintain relationships with people who are outside of the medical field or who are not my co-workers. So many times I see residents who they're, because we spend so much time in the hospital, they lose connection with people who they had been friends with before. And, and then their network of friends is solely constricted to their co-residents and people in the hospital. And what that means is they only talk about hospital or work stuff. So they're never actually able to get away from the workplace environment. They're never able to de-stress completely. And I think that for me, maintaining friendships outside of work and outside of medicine has been crucial to help me do that. The second way in which we can prioritize our mental health is by maintaining our hobbies outside of medicine. It's so important to have a creative outlet and to really allow yourself to get lost and to get entrenched in something outside of work. For Mo and I, we both enjoy uh, physical fitness, we both, Mo enjoys cooking, uh, but we both enjoy creating content and um, that's sort of become our creative outlet that we do together. The third way in which we prioritize our mental, mental health is by practicing wellness. And so what that means for me is that the two of us, Mo and I, we have dinner together every night and we turn our cell phones off we try to engage with one another we try to be present in the moment and we try to have a conversation and the last way that i have been able to combat burnout is by implementing a couple of very important workplace modifications the most important of which is fine-tuning my efficiency at work i know many residents who take a lot of their work home with them to complete at home in the evenings. And for me, my evening time is a time in which I want to separate myself from the workplace environment. I like to be 100% engaged and present when I'm at work. I try to complete all my progress notes at work, my consult notes, my operative notes. Obviously, I see all my patients at work and communicate with all the other teams at work. I try to not have work saved for me to be done when I go home. This year has been especially tough because I also, as the chief, have administrative duties. I have number of emails to respond to, number of quality metrics to respond to, number of case, um, uh, number of presentations to make. And so there are a lot more on my plate, but I still try to carve out time during my workday to be able to get those tasks done so I'm not working on those tasks at home in the evening. Another way in which I have been able to combat burnout is to maintain a mindset of positivity. I know far too many residents who get frustrated at the hospital system, who get frustrated at inter with their interactions of other teams, or other doctors or providers doing things in ways in which they would have not done or doing something differently. When these situations arise, I try to view the interactions with other medical providers and other members of the healthcare team as just that, it's a team sport. And so everybody is their own individual, everybody may have a different way of doing things, may have a different way of completing various tasks, but as long as the tasks get done and get done efficiently and get done in a way that's optimized for the patient, I believe that everybody is able to do things in their own way. So those are a couple of the strategies that I have employed on my residency journey to help me get through burnout and to find a sense of purpose in my work and to really find a sense of joy in the interactions that I get from taking care of patients. The hospital system and healthcare environment is an extremely 
a challenging environment, a very high stakes environment, obviously with patient health and patient well-being at the forefront. Um, oftentimes it takes an expense at the cost of the healthcare providers. But through some of these modifications, I have maintained an attitude of positivity and I've been able to take care of patients in a more efficient and in a better manner. And I think my patients are very thankful for it. So if you are someone who's struggling from burnout, uh, I would encourage you to seek help. I would encourage you to perhaps try some of the suggestions that have worked for me. Seek help from others. Talk to your program directors talk to other senior residents, talk to family members um, who, who may be able to help you with some of those things. As always, please let me know in the comments below what you think of this video. And if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So for now, I'll let you go and we'll check in later. Peace.